know people like what you need to Okay, so hi everyone, thank you for coming. So today we're going to present to you about it. So I'd like to start out the workshop with an activity so you all stand up and stand up the circle. but it's the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. It has a population of about 5.4 million people, and from them, 2.3 million people live in poverty and 831,000 live in extreme poverty. So like every country, Nicaragua has pros and cons. So good things about Nicaragua is that it's the safest country in Central America. It has a great location, the hospitality of the people, it has natural beauty, co 
colonial towns and beaches on both oceans. And like these are the pictures of the beaches, the colonial towns, Corn Island, and all the things in Guatemala as well. But also there's some not so good things, such as a lot of poverty, lack of education, and economic instability, and lack of support from government. And like here are the pictures of the reality of Nicaragua. Like people live in trash, they have bad houses and bad in health conditions. Some statistics about Nicaragua is that 43% of the population lives with less than two dollars a day. So like you can imagine what this feels like for the parents of the family to have only two dollars a day to give food and, and everything for the families. Also, only 79% of primary school age children are enrolled to school. And out of them, only 29% complete elementary school. So the others drop out. And also, the average student-teacher ratio is 35 to 1, meaning that there's one teacher for 35 students. So you can imagine how hard it is for one teacher to help 35 students at one time. Also, 2% of Nicaragua's population could use the internet as of 2004. Although this was 11 years ago, you can like imagine how low it was, and right now it isn't as high. It's like less than 50%. Also, only 48% of students who begin the first grade finish sixth grade, so the others drop out. And the curriculum for government schools has not been changed in about 25 years. So the things that children learn in 1990 is the same thing they're learning nowadays. That's something very bad. So you might be wondering why we pointed out all these things that Jorgeto has, and that Nicaragua has. And the point of it all is that it concludes in Jorgeto's Children Foundation. So, our mission is to empower the underserved children of Nicaragua through education so they may reach their full potential and take advantage of economic possibilities. So what the organization does is that it provides an education in nutrition and basic like courses such as math and English, Spanish, history for the, um, for the underserved children of Nicaragua, meaning like the percentage of the youth that does not get to receive an education. Um, it envisions a prosperous Nicaragua where every children and their families have an opportunity to go out to make a living and move ahead in their lives. So, Pareto's history started in 1953 when Father Pareto, which you can see in this picture, and he came to Nicaragua after a huge earthquake that happened and there was a ruin, so he came and decided he was going to help the children. And he went to an area called Somoto, which is in Madrid, in the top part of Nicaragua, as you can see in this map. And this is Somoto's main attraction. It's a canyon, and it like brings the attraction of a lot of tourists. And these are some of the pictures of Fabreto in Somoto. In 1990, um, Father Fabreto passes away suddenly, and the organization established in like established it's officially established in Nicaragua. Then in 1993 it established in the US and from zero we went to 300 beneficiaries. And 2003 it established in Spain. So you can see that we're spreading around the world and it has about 1200 beneficiaries. In 2012 which was 3 years ago a fund was established in the UK and we reached about 12,000 beneficiaries. So you can see the growth from 300 to 12,000 is something amazing that the organization has achieved. And these are some of the pictures of the events held worldwide for Fabreto. For example, in these three posters, you can see Night for Niños, which are held in the United States, and Miami, New York City, and Washington, D.C. And it's nights for fundraisings for all the children with the of fundraising. And these two pictures, you can see events held in Spain, fundraising events. And Pareto focuses on five main programs. The first program is community well-being and development. 
which its main goal is to it's educate like it's the well being of every person and it's to mobilize health. So it focuses mainly on the health department because majority of the population in Nicaragua struggles with this because of their economic position, so they don't have clean environments to live in. And it has achieved over one thousand parents, volunteers, and health campaigns all around schools. Then rural secondary education is an after school tutoring program that guides itself through a program called SAT, where they give classes to secondary education about community service and social entrepreneurship. And food security and nutrition focuses on the nutrition aspect of people due to, again, to their economic position. Some families don't have enough money, as you can see, they survive on less than $2 a day to feed their entire family the three meals that they need to survive. So what it does is that it provides every student in their schools a daily meal and has achieved that for over 10,000 children, which is amazing because some basic children, they don't get food at home, so Pablo gives them that. And vocational education teaches the youth how to get a job, like the skills needed to get a job, what they need for it, and how to prepare for it. And primary education enrichment are after school enrichment programs that focus on the areas where students need help for elementary. And it has a 94 promotion rate and 92% retention rate, which means that majority that enroll are stay there. And this is huge because majority of the students, like impoverished students, they have to drop out of school because of the lack of support from government and transportation to get there. This is some of the achievements that Pareto has achieved through these programs. In rural secondary education, as I said, it has a 92 retention rate, and 754 students are enrolled. The primary education literacy has increased about 20% from 2011 to 2013. And the parent training went from 1,000 parents to 8,000 in only one year. And this is super important because without educating the support from the parents, children won't really learn or get into it because at the end of the day, the parents are the one that makes the decision. And if they're not educated, the children won't be either. And the teacher development went from 160 teachers in 2011 to 1,800 in 2012. Pareto has different partnerships, and the first one is Pineal Baskets, which my partners are going to pass through the classroom. And it's a group of women that work together, and they sew the, the, the baskets with the needle of the pine trees. And they do it by hand, and they weave it in Um We also have a partnership with the Feed My Starving Children, which are the ones that provide the daily meals for over 10,000 children in all the schools. And they give this patch, which are called mana packs. It brings rice and soy, soybeans and minerals. And so this is important because this is this is an organization that helps Pabreto feed all of the children. And its main organization is Nika Hope, which is a jewelry cooperative that they're gonna also pass out some samples. And it's again this group of women that do these things with recycled materials by hand. And we're gonna show you a video about the organization. Back to the lady. Oh, sorry. Okay, so um, it's this woman that came to Nicaragua and decided that she wanted. She saw 
how women were treated and how they didn't get a future and they had to spend time at home, how they were discriminated. So she came and she decided that she wanted to help this woman. So she opened this organization which is called Mika Hope and she invited this woman to come in and to participate in the living and to educate themselves. And at the same time, like have fun and work together making this true. And so what Pareto does is that they make them and they give them to Pareto, Pareto sells them, and then they give part of the, what they earn in the commission to their advantage. So you might be wondering, why are we talking so much? Do you want to know what are we exactly doing? So that's what I'm going to tell you right now. So our goals basically are to spread the word, to really say that education is a problem that concerns us, and in Nicaragua, a developing country, is something that it needs to be heard and spread the word to the people. Sponsoring a classroom. Sponsoring, sponsoring a classroom consists on um, giving money to a public school, a government school in Nicaragua, to provide enough money so they can um, buy all the necessary materials that they need, like textbooks, uh, pens, pencils, and also to help uh, to pay a little bit or of the salary of the teacher. Also, we want to create awareness to say that education is the solution for every problem that we have, not every, but most of the problems, and that it's something that you need, it, it is used to empower people and that it must be spread. Also, we interact with the children, and that I will elaborate on that a little bit. So, where does Jorito work? This is Nicaragua. So, in Nicaragua, Jorito has seven main centers in all of these cities. Ogotarsomoto, La Sabana, Skuma, Pesteliz, and Isirola, Tawalika. Okay, you might not know those centers. Those three mm -hmm. it's okay. The ones that are located in the capital, uh, Las Habanas, San Isidro Bola, San Atabolica. So, where does ANS work? We decided to work in the community San Isidro Bolas, and the school name is Rubén Darío Sarmiento. So, the school is located here, and we decided to work there because it is easier for us to get there because it is about five minutes away from our school. And apart from the seven centers that Loreto has, it has partnerships with around 100 local schools that they give after school training. So these are some pictures that we actually took when we went to the school. So this is a classroom, I believe it's fifth or sixth grade. And that's where they have lunch every single day. And these are the two hallways that make up the whole school. So there are six classrooms in total. There's one classroom per, per grade, from first through sixth grade. And this is the a picture we took of the technology technology room that they have there. They have about ten computers, but of those ten computers, only work only for work. So what the technology teacher does is that she pairs up the kids so they can work. And we see that technology is something that it can use to improve education, as you all know. But if, if they don't have enough like computers to actually learn to them, then that is a real problem that comes in. Also, in this picture, this is the entire room they use to feed the children because of the big amounts they have. They have to pass them by, like, like grades because they don't have enough chairs to sit them. So they pass first, first and second grade, and then third and fourth, and then fifth and sixth. So, what we're trying to do is uh, help them improve that by providing them with the materials they need in order to feed them up. So some fundraisers that we did at schools in order to get funds are, we participated in the fall festival, we sent candy cane grants, and also some bake sales, and Valentine's Day grants. And also the So our main project is called Classroom to Classroom. The objective, or it was designed for um, US people or teenagers or any person that was interested in sponsoring a classroom in Nicaragua. Actually, we are the first Nicaraguan people that are doing this program. So our objectives are to visit the school and interact with the students. The, the activity that we did when we went to the school was to create a 
not create, but have a throw up a birthday party for them. We decided to do a birthday party because, as I can imagine, every single one of you has had a birthday party or a birthday gift that you can remember since you were little. Unfortunately, these kids had never had a birthday party in their life. And I think that a memory so beautiful like a birthday party is something that remains with you throughout your life. And I think that if we have the opportunity to leave a mark in those kids' memories, it's the best gift that we can give them. Also, we want to be role models for them. We want to inspire them to, as us as Nicaraguans, to say, hey, you study, you can do it. It doesn't matter if you, if you, are, if you don't have as much resources. But if you, if you want to, you can do it. Also, we want to create awareness with the Nicaraguan people because, I, as I said before, we are the first club of actual Nicaraguan people opening it. So, and I also name Nicaragua, but all over the world, because I can imagine that before you came into this presentation, you have never heard of Fabretto. And it doesn't matter if you're, if you're gonna work through Fabretto or not, but that you know about the problem in our country and all over the world, and that you can help us to solve it. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we had a slightly prepared, so you can see, like, actual pictures of us there, but, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> so how many days have you gone to the school? Actually, we have only gone twice. And are you going to go? Yes, we are planning to have a birthday party. Okay, so the birthday parties work work like this. They, we have one every two months. So one for like January and February, one mm -hmm. for March and April. Because we decided to do it like that because. We thought if we do it every month, then there aren't many kids that have birthdays in January. So we decided to like combine them. So we're planning, we don't have a, a date set yet, but we are planning on doing it when we get back, or at least the first days of the next month. And the idea of the birthday party is to interact with the children because normally this program is for students in the US, mm -hmm. and so they don't really get the chance to interact with the children, they do it by mail. And because we're the first school in Central, we're like the first club in, in, Amer in Nicaragua, then we decided that we wanted to go step ahead of that and get to know the children like on a name, name to name basis and them to get to know us. So that's the whole point of the party. So our future goals are to paint the school. We already have half of the paint in order to paint the whole school. But getting the rest of it, it's been really hard. So we're planning on like trying to get all of the paint so we can paint all the school at the same time. Because the thing is that we didn't want to go like twice to paint because we just, we think that, I don't know, paint dries at a different level. <laughs> we want to visit the main Fabretto organization that is located in Somoto, it's north of Nicaragua. And what we want to do there is to actually know the children in the main organization so we can connect more to the organization itself and know about more of the program. We want to spread for in Nicaragua, like other schools or other citizens to know about it so they can create our clubs or communities so they can help the organization or the club itself. So we want to also to organize big events alongside the organization, for example, as I said before, the classroom to classroom was designed for people in the United States. So what they did is that the US people came once a year in, during the summer break and they had a week to actually know the kids that they were sponsoring. But we decided that in order to get more people, more people involved of Nicaragua, that we can maybe um, create our own like week and we can use like a hostess to make it more The whole ride has been awesome, but you know that there's always setbacks and problems. So, as being the first organization in Nicaragua, a new program had to be created, like new objectives, new rules, new everything. So it was like, we were like the experiment. So we are still being the experiment, like the test. <laughs> also, okay, try it. Another hard thing has been 
trying to get sponsors because there is a lot of organizations in, present in Nicaragua that more people know about it. So also, if, if a person knows about this organization, they're going to be more willing to help that organization. So trying to convince people to actually tell them that, hey, this is a problem, you need your help, has been a real problem. Also, coordinating with everyone's schedule has been hard because our school year starts in August and their school year starts in February. So when you're, when, maybe when you're, you're starting it, they're like halfway through the school year. So it's, it's gonna, it's hard to, connect with their schedule. Also because they're they're there from like seven through one and we get out of school at two. So sometimes the kids need to like come back for tutoring at two or three. That's the SAT program we talked about before. And that's when we get to actually So we have two we to be part of their story. <laughs> so we're gonna share their story with small children, so apart from it being really dangerous, it's a real sacrifice for them to go and get their education.
this quote that was in one. One child, one teacher, one book, and one friend can change the world. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to change the world one child. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. And if you don't want to answer this, it's, I understand it. it. But does the government support Pogreso? If they have a good relationship, and if you, if you feel, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Well, normally, they they have been supporting Pogreso this all past years, but recently, there has been a problem with the SAT program that Pogreso follows because the government believes that it's not like adapting to Nicaragua's curriculum. And oh, so they're so trying... It's, it's a ministry problem. Yes. yes. Okay, so it's, it's not that the government doesn't support it, it's that it's that those programs do not relate so much with Nicaragua's. Do private schools now have to, are you, are you closely tied with the, because in Honduras now, all schools are closely tied to the ministry uh, curriculum, which wasn't the case before. So is that the same in Nicaragua? Yes, they have added many more classes for uh -huh. the Nicaraguan curriculum the recently. Same, the same thing in Honduras. Yes. They've just changed this year. They haven't, to get the back to right? Uh, they added like five more classes. They added a bunch more classes. And yeah, this changed. They did that in, in Honduras yeah. as well. So like the 11th and 12th graders are scrambling right now to, to get those classes made okay. up. Okay. From all your fundraising, how much did you raise since you started yours? We have raised about between 500 and 600 dollars. Good job. Well done. Which is enough to sponsor classes because I, I didn't specify. But the minimum amount to sponsor a classroom is 500, but you can give as much as you want. 500 per semester. So we have made 500 per semester. And we started in October. So it was from October to December. What grade are you girls in? 10. So you have two more years of this program. That's yeah. really exciting because you can make such a difference if you continue with your program. Did you all? walk along with this little, how did, um, how did you get the film of her going to school? From this organization. Oh, they provide it? Yeah. is an actual organization in Nicaragua. It already exists. It uh -huh. was founded by Father Fabreto in 1963. And so what we decided to do is to extend the organization uh -huh. to our school and become the first one in Nicaragua to have it in order to support and sponsor and help the children in different schools. But we decided to focus on one school, which is the one we showed you. Any other questions? Good job. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, and if you're interested in the baskets, I can give you the contact. So, yeah, they're actually, I mean, if you guys are interested in buying them in the store and stuff, that would be stuff. They would take back the money. But I applaud them because most of, the, most of the kids that are doing this are from the United States, like they said, from the United States. And they come down for a couple of days, right? A week. A week. They come once every year, a week from the, uh, like a reunion, uh -huh. the children they're sponsoring and then, and so they meet in, in, in some of them, and then they accept them. Okay. They're kind of trying to change up. They're getting in the classrooms more, more often than trying to kind of start it more in Nicaragua now. And are you going to, like, are you guys the only people in all the years going for? Mm -hmm. No, we, we have, are. We have a club. Like, we're, we are the ones that handle the club, but we have members in the club that help us. One of the things I learned from one of the presentations from ASM, and probably something you've done already, but I'll put it out there, mm -hmm. is uh, communicating with social responsible organizations and saying, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to do Nicaragua to Nicaragua, as opposed to the United States to Nicaragua. We're doing something local. You support our organization and have different levels of sponsorship. Have you tried that? Yes. And you That's haven't had any feedback? Well, that's one, like, we haven't really, really tried because we've been focused more in June. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because we just, like, we just opened the club recently. But one of our goals for the future is to like organize events alongside the organization, and for that we would need to find like sponsors or tell them like mm. this is our organization doing this. Well, we have tried a little bit for the paint. Mm -hmm. 
we we got half of it because of the economic situation in Nicaragua and the immense amounts of organizations there are. You have to be like at task in order for yeah. to like get you. You should talk that. to that group, the Chicho group. And I think. Sure. Uh, so it's like all overlaps in America. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. We have like two minutes. <laughs>